Freedom Radio app. Live on Capital Radio 91.6 FM. All right, all right, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Freedom Radio Hour. I'm your host, DJ Adam Cruz, and I have my fantastic co-host here. Eddie Nicholas, what up, Adam? And welcome to Capital Radio 91.6 FM. What up, sir? (laughs) Well, I'm so glad to be here. We're here at Episode 9, Season 1. I'm so excited. We have a lot of music business news. It it seems like the more that we're doing this show, Eddie, more and more news is coming out Mm -hmm. that I think it's interesting to bring up. Uh, as a recap from last week, we were talking about how the IRAA, the Recording Industry Association, has published their report that in so far, 2014 will not see a platinum selling artist, so no artist album. If you remember, we were talking about uh, the, the soundtrack, which doesn't count as an album frozen, art, uh-huh. that was frozen, that moved 3.2 million mm-hmm. copies so far. Um, well, now um, we were pondering whether Taylor Swift, whose new album, 1989, Mm. just came out, whether that would pass the one one million mark before the end of the year so that the IRAA, if for nothing else, can save face, Mm -hmm. you know? So as it turns out, the data just came out this week, and Taylor Swift, in her very first week, has sold 1.2 million copies of her album, 1989. They think it's, um, there's a few reasons, but largely because she has uh, such popularity from that song, Shake It Off. Okay. Uh, you know, the kids really like that stuff. You know, but uh, Taylor Swift is now a party of one. So industry insiders are saying she's basically defying uh, retail gravity at this point. Well, I don't think it's defying retail gravity. I think it is what it is. She's the popular artist at this time. Yeah, but there were uh, lots of other artists, too, that they haven't moved nearly a million units. That, she has that cost appeal. Well, they're saying there's several reasons. Check it out. Okay. They're saying the first reason is that Taylor Swift was everywhere. She started a whole blitz of campaign that was um, not unlike what we see before, but in this climate, she really hit them hard. Let me tell you what she did. So she appeared on Ryan Seacrest. He's a U.S. Uh, here in the States. He's a big personality. He kind of took over Casey Kasem and others like okay, Dick Clark okay. and such. So Ryan Seacrest on his radio show, uh, he had a proper airing of the album when it came out. She did that. She did mm-hmm. Good Morning America. She's done all of the major network shows. She did Ellen DeGeneres and so on and so forth. And what she's done, too, is uh, not just be everywhere, but engage with her fans at every interval. Mm-hmm. The other thing she's doing is taking advantage of hashtags. You know how for the for the Freedom Radio Hour, we, use, we utilize a hashtag Freedom Radio Hour. For her, she does... Uh, she uses Taylor Lurking or Tay Lurkin. So and for those that you don't know, that hashtag is a reminder of like a um, tic-tac-toe board. Yes, it's like a pound sign, yeah. you know? <laughs> but anyway, so what What I really realized is that, um, so Taylor Swift being young, she's taking advantage of the tools that her young people are using. Yeah, is she in like her early 20s? She is. Okay. So and and so what she's done is she's everywhere. The second thing is she's talking with her fans online using these hashtags. So she hits up her fans and asks them that answer questions, and she's very engaging in that way. And they freak out. They love her because of that. Um, and so fans will take pictures of them buying the product. You know, so there's a lot about Taylor that works. The other thing is because she started with American Idol, then went mm-hmm. over to the country, she's young and she's galvanized her base. All those all those things need seem to be working in her favor. And it's very much unlike any other artist out there right now in the States. And they're saying that because of that is the reason why that she was able to push so many units. But before we recorded here today, you and I were talking about some other artists, right? Mm-hmm. You were made mention of a surprise leak, not surprise yeah, album Ms. that will be coming Ms. out. Bouncy Beyonce. Bouncy. Yes. <laughs> So, evidently, Beyonce uh, was planning a secret release for Friday or next Friday. And oops, it got leaked. You know, dang, oops, it got released. I'm sorry. See, I get so emotional when it comes (laughs) to these people and these other R&B, pop, hip-hop, whatever you want to call it. (laughs) I know, there's a lot. So, she was planning... Uh, basically, the the, the self titled album that she released at the end of 2013, which mm-hmm. was a surprise, and that now, sold that, several million. I was say, didn't that go? Um... That did very well, but in 2013, it's still selling now, and it's actually uh, surpassed 700,000 marks for 2014. But it's not a platinum seller for this year. Oh. Okay. But was it a platinum seller for last year though? Correct. Right? Okay. But we're only talking about yearly sales now. Okay. Okay. okay? 
Um, so yeah, so Beyonce was planning a re-release of her self-titled album with extra remixes, videos, and such, and that was supposed to be a surprise. But they're saying that when that drops, which should be in the next week or two, that that might beat out Taylor Swift, in which case IRAA might feel a lot better. Um, and the other album that we're talking about is Miss Mary J. Blige. Yeah, the London the Sessions will be out very soon if they're not out already, and they're saying she might help the, the situation. But... Going back to Taylor, she did something that was very interesting that I want to talk about after the break. Mm -hmm. She pulled all of her albums from Spotify. And we're going to talk mm -hmm. about why and what that means for you and I when we return right here at the Freedom Radio Hour. Capital Radio 91.6. Freedom Radio Hour. Live on Capital Radio 91.6 FM. What up, good people? Welcome back. I'm Eddie Nicholas. Welcome back to Capital Radio 91.6 FM. I'm here with my co-partner, Mr. Adam Cruz. Now, Adam, before we um, went for a brief little second there, we were talking about some interesting information. Can yes. we kind of backtrack towards that? Yes. Yeah, so uh, before the break, we were talking about Taylor Swift and how mm -hmm. she has surpassed the one million mark which makes her the only artist in 2014 to do so in the States, okay? So, before we broke, I also mentioned that before she managed to do all that, Miss Taylor Swift and her people and the label pulled not only this new album entitled 1989, but they also pulled all of her other albums from Spotify. Now, kind of give people an overview, a brief overview of what Spotify is. Okay, so Spotify is a subscription service you pay per month and you're granted X amount of access to songs in their catalog. Okay. For a certain amount of money, you could have unlimited amount of songs you could just play at your leisure. It's a streaming service. So from your computer or from your mobile phone, you can play any song in their catalog over and over again, like you would do a radio station, but you can okay. choose the songs. Um, from the streaming like Pandora? service. Pandora? Yes, it's oh. just like a Pandora. It's okay. the same thing. For Spotify, it's become a great thing for people to discover new music. Mm -hmm. But for the artists, they have been complaining quite loudly, especially lately, because Spotify, while it's wonderful for the end user, it's not wonderful for the artists. So well, here's what's happening. Spotify is saying 70% of the income we're getting, we pay to the labels. And that might be beautiful and everything, except the artists are saying, well, we only are getting a fraction of a penny per stream. Mm -hmm. Our music is only getting paid back to us a, a fraction of a penny. Think about what that is. That's not even a penny. That's a fraction thereof that's going to the artist. And <laughs> well, let me tell you something. You know what? This hot. This is kind of how ASCAP. Of a penny. Yes, this is how ASCAP, BMI, and them started because. The artist felt there was no protection. The money was going to the label, and the, and the label never gave the money to the artist. So performance rights came out because, in, in part, so that the artist could get money directly. Mm -hmm. You weren't waiting for the label to issue you a statement with your money. But Spotify and streaming services like them are not in that same model. So their, their money goes to the label. Mm -hmm. And so the artist is saying from that, the, the artist only gets a fraction of a penny per stream. Mm -hmm. Now, to give you some perspective. And then a you, portion of that half a penny, if they give it to the label, that half a penny gets broken down into a, a, a quarter of a something. Well, let me tell you, <laughs> by the time you get the fraction of a penny, everything has been broken down with the line share going to the aggregator. So in this case, Spotify. Mm, and you know how I feel about that. Well, if they're saying, here's the thing that's the quagmire. If, if Spotify is saying that they are paying out 70% of their income to the label, then it should be that the lion's share goes to the artist, To the right? artist, correct. But why is it that the artist is not getting any money? So in response to that, Taylor Swift and her people pulled her albums. And when we come back, we're going to explain what her quote was and what her feelings were about Spotify to cause this. And we'll talk about that and more here at the Freedom Radio Hour. Capital Radio, 91.6 FM, the heartbeat of Freedom Radio Hour. And we're back here at the Freedom Radio Hour live on Capital Radio 91.6 FM, the heartbeat of Sudan. I'm your host, DJ Adam Cruz, and I have my fantastic co-host here. Eddie Nicholas. 
Yes, we're having a great time talking music, music business news, and trends from around the world. As always, the Freedom Radio Hour is here to let you know the latest and greatest and what's happening in the music industry. Okay, so what we wanted to talk about was Taylor Swift and her label, Big Machine Records, and what they did. In response to how low the money is for artists, the label decided to pull the album 1989. So they first pulled that. What they said was, not only is it pennies on the dollar for us to make any money, no, no. Spotify, a fraction of a penny. Thank you. Let's get it right. Yes, a fraction of a penny. <laughs> a fraction of a penny. Yes. Um, but also, what they wanted to do is said, look, we were willing to mess with you, Spotify, but what we wanted you to do was allow access to the album from anyone outside of the U.S. for a spell. Then after that, Spotify was then would be allowed to put the album up on the U.S. side for us here in the States to enjoy. So what Spotify said is, no, we're going to put it up everywhere. Taylor Swift is a very popular artist on our roster. She has over 19 million playlists, blah, 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 blah. So the label said, oh, yeah, we'll pull it. But there's an inside scoop to this. They have another agenda. Yes. So the other agenda for Big Machine Records is that they have been dying to get sold. And so what they want to do is they want to increase their valuation how much their label is worth by keeping this product out. So anything that they're putting out, especially a Taylor Swift, which broke the bank here, and they have removed it because they want to add more muscle and they want to be worth more to possible possible buyers and investors. Oh, so, so there's they're more looking to be to bought out or bought out or sucked up in somebody, a bigger pie. pie. That has nothing to do with the artist and the love for artistry. You understand what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is that we have still yet to find a viable solution as to why from all all these streaming services because let's talk about the fact that we're not hi highlighting right now Pandora and mm -hmm. other streaming ser services that are giving paying us a fraction of a penny they're not just Spotify Spotify is in the limelight now that's why we're talking about them but other streaming services are guilty of the very same thing so here at the Freedom Radio Hour we want you to check out freedomradiohour.com for all the latest and definitely Leave a comment under everything that we're posting yes. because we want to know what you have to Very say about everything. Like to what you have to say. Exactly. So definitely thank you for tuning in and keep it locked here for the next time around. We want to talk more about this music business news and trends from around the, the world. world. I'm your co-host, DJ Adam Cruz. I have Eddie Nicholas. Yes, he's our fabulous co-host. Definitely check out EddieNicholas.com. He has a brand new record called One Time Out Now. And I hope you enjoyed the live edit of Shake that we played much earlier. Keep it locked here. FreedomRadioHour.com, y'all. Peace. Peace out, Capital Radio, 91.6 FM. Boom, boom. <laughs> Radio 91.6 FM. All right, all right, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Freedom Radio Hour. I'm your host, DJ Adam Cruz, and I have my fantastic co-host here. Eddie Nicholas, what up, Adam? And welcome to Capital Radio 91.6 FM. What up, sir? <laughs> well, I'm so glad to be here. We're here at Episode 9, Season 1. I'm so excited. We have a lot of music business news. It, it seems like the more that we're doing this show, Eddie, more and more news is coming out mm -hmm. that I think it's interesting to bring up. Uh, as a recap from last week, we were talking about how the IRAA, the Recording Industry Association, has published their report that in so far... 2014 will not see a platinum selling artist so no artist album if you remember we were talking about uh, the, the soundtrack which doesn't count as an album frozen, art uh -huh. that was frozen that moved 3.2 make it out okay they're saying the first reason is that taylor swift was everywhere she started a whole blitz of campaign that was um not unlike what we see before but in this climate she really hit them hard let me tell you what she did so she appeared on Ryan Seacrest, he's a U.S. Uh, here in the States, he's a big personality. He kind of took over Casey Kasem and others like him, okay, Dick Clark okay. and stuff. So Ryan Seacrest on his radio show, uh, he had a proper airing of the album when it came out. She did that. She did mm -hmm. Good Morning America. She's done all of the major network shows. She did Ellen DeGeneres and so on and so forth. And what she's done, too, is 
uh, not just be everywhere, but engage with her fans at every interval. Mm -hmm. The other thing she's doing is taking advantage of hashtags. You know how for the for the Freedom Radio Hour, we use we utilize a hashtag Freedom Radio Hour. For her, she does a. Uh, she uses Taylor Lurking or Tay Lurkin. So and for those that you don't know, that hashtag is reminder of like a um, tic tac toe board. Yes, it's like a pound sign, yeah. you know? <laughs> but anyway, so uh, bouncy. Uh, yes. <laughs> So evidently, Beyonce uh, was planning a secret release for Friday or next Friday, and oops, it got leaked. You know, dang, <laughs> no, oops, it got released. I'm sorry. See, I get so emotional when it comes <laughs> to these people in these other R&B, pop, hip hop, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I know, there's a lot. So she was planning, uh, basically, the the. The self-titled album that she released at the end of 2013, which mm -hmm. was a surprise, and that now, sold that, several million. I was like, didn't that go? Um... That did very well, but in 2013, it's still selling now, and it's actually surpassed 700,000 marks for 2014. But it's not a platinum seller for this year. Oh. Okay. But was it a platinum seller for last year though? Correct. Right? Okay. But we're only talking about yearly sales now. Okay. Okay. okay? Um, so yeah, so Beyonce was planning a re-release of her self-titled album with extra remixes, videos, and such, and that was supposed to be a surprise. But what what I really realized is that um, so Taylor Swift, being young, she's taking advantage of the tools that her young people are using. Yeah, is she in like her early twenties? She is. Okay. So and and so what she's done is she's everywhere. The second thing is she's talking with her fans online using these hashtags. So she hits up her fans and asks them that answer questions, and she's very engaging in that way, and they freak out. They love her because mm -hmm. of that. Um, and so fans will take pictures of them buying the product. You know, so there's a lot about Taylor that works. The other thing is because she started with American Idol, then went mm -hmm. over to the country, she's young and she's galvanized her base. All those all those things need seem to be working in her favor. And it's very much unlike any other artist out there right now in the States. And they're saying that because of that is the reason why that she was able to push so many units. But before we recorded here today, you and I were talking about some other artists, right? Mm -hmm. You were made mention of a surprise leak, not surprise yeah, album that will be coming Ms. out. Bouncy Beyonce. Selling mm -hmm. copies so far. Um, well, now um, we were pondering whether Taylor Swift, whose new album 1989 mm -hmm. just came out, whether that would pass the one, one million mark before the end of the year so that the IRAA, if for nothing else, can save face, mm -hmm. you know? So as it turns out, the data just came out this week and Taylor Swift in her very first week has sold 1.2 million copies of her album 1989. And I think it's, um, there's a few reasons, but largely because she has a, such popularity from that song, Shake It Off. Okay. Uh, you know, the kids really like that stuff. You know, but uh, Taylor Swift is now a party of one. So industry insiders are saying she's basically defying uh, retail gravity at this point. Well, I don't think it's defying retail gravity. I think it is what it is. She's the popular artist at this time. Yeah, but there were uh, lots of other artists, too, that they haven't moved nearly a million units. That, she has that cross appeal. Well, they're saying there's several reasons. Check